This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I'm on my way now. Welcome back to St. Martin, everyone. As you can probably tell, we're absolutely loving this island. We've been here for close to a week now, but today we might have found our favorite location. Yeah, we are in Grand Cast and staying at the Grand Cast Beach Club. This place is absolutely incredible and we cannot wait to show you around. So a lot of you guys have been wondering how expensive is this island in general? You know, the Caribbean, Caribbean islands are usually quite pricey. So I think a lot of you guys are wondering where does this fit into that aspect? So today we're gonna be talking about all sorts of costs from accommodations to food to uh, different tours that you can take and how expensive those will be. So you'll get some idea of how much things will cost. First off, let's talk about the setting here. This place is absolutely gorgeous. You have this beautiful hotel on what I would say is one of the most spectacular beaches we've seen on this island. The color of the water here is so, so amazing. You guys, we are in literal paradise right now. And we're super excited as always. If you guys are excited, just hit the like button because that'll help us out, but there's so much to see at this place. So at the hotel here, there's this really cool walkway that you can kind of circle around to the other side. Yeah, there's another side with a beach. There's also a restaurant here as well. There's a whole bunch of amenities here. We're gonna try to cover them all today. But one of the things we really like about this kind of look off area is you get, let's see if I can get this in the shot. Okay, there's like loungers everywhere. I know, I love the setup here. It's basically so many different spots with loungers that you're never not gonna be able to find a spot. It's not like a place where you have to get up at 6 a.m. and reserve, you no. can just come and relax. Another thing that I love about this place is they actually include like non-motorized water sports. So you get snorkel gear, they have like paddle boards. But speaking of snorkeling, you can actually snorkel around here. We were told there are turtles and fish. Sounds amazing. I wish we had time to do that today, but we're filming this video. We're just coming across some uh, other chairs right now, and this is uh, this is the view they have. This is the place to be, I think. This is amazing. Can you imagine just sitting here all day, looking at that water, beautiful color, all those boats out there. I love this place. Can I stay forever? So when you actually come around the corner here, I should say the other corner on the other side, you come across the restaurant. Yeah, so it's called Sunset Cafe. They do have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and outside guests can come as well. So if you're not staying here, you can come have this amazing place to eat. And it's called Sunset Cafe for a reason. I think there's amazing sunsets from <laughs> yeah, here as well. And speaking of amazing things, look at that beach over there. Yeah, so believe it or not, when you're staying here, you get two beaches, Grand Cass on one side, which we already saw, and then over here is Petite Flash, two beaches. We've just made our way over to the pool now, and this might be even better than the beaches. Depends if you're a pool person or a beach person. So this pool has zero entry on one side, and what's kind of neat is we're up higher, and it almost looks like it blends in with the ocean. I think through the lens it might look like that. The water's the same color, but you guys, you got two amazing beaches and one pool. What would you pick? I absolutely love how many stations there are to sit at here. This place just keeps getting better. Now we're on the beach. Yeah, I could easily come and spend ages here, but let's talk a little bit about cost, because obviously that's what we're gonna be talking discussing today is what to expect for costs here and affordability of St. Martin. Accommodations are all over the place. In general, you're not going to find anything that's super, super budget. If you are a backpacker and you usually stay in Southeast Asia for $10 a night, not going to happen here. You can probably find a very, very budget accommodation in a little apartment or a little studio for maybe $100 a night. Maybe you might be able to get a little bit below that, but don't expect anything super, super cheap. A hotel like this, this one starts at $200 per night in the low season and goes up from there. Obviously, it's February, it's more expensive than that, but if you're coming in the summertime, you can expect to pay that. Yeah, to me, this is totally worth it. I mean, this is almost like a private beach it in is. a way. And this hotel has so many amenities that we haven't even talked about yet. Obviously, you get two beaches, a pool, there is a gym. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. They even have like laundry, free laundry services. They have yoga classes. They have like a Tuesday night get together thing with all the the staff and everyone that's staying here. It's, it's a really incredible place and I'd love to come back here and spend a significant amount of time. The sheer amount of yachts on this island should be a good indicator of the cost. So just expect that you are gonna pay a little more like Anna said, but you can find some lower price accommodations. But back to the yachts for a second. I think this is the most amount of yachts we've ever seen on one island. And this is just a sliver of them right here in St. Martin. We've been around to so many different countries now and we've seen many yachts and, all, and like Croatia is a big yacht uh, country for sure. But 
This one, I don't know you guys, this might be the most amount of yachts we've ever seen. We're just in front of the buildings where the rooms are and check out, again, amazing views all over the place and loads and loads of loungers like we said. You're not going to not be able to find a spot. We were actually about to show you our room but it's just getting clean right now. We're super hungry so we're thinking we're going to head into down. It's about a 10 minute walk and grab something to eat. Before we get any further in the video, we just wanted to say a huge thanks to Squarespace for being a sponsor once again. You guys definitely know by now how much we love Squarespace. We of course built our own website on Squarespace, but we have a web design company that we exclusively use Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that helps you stand out and succeed online. Get started by choosing one of the professional website templates with designs for every style that can easily be customized. They have dozens of templates to choose from as well as pre-built layouts. You'll build your website using Fluid Engine, a reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. But did you know you can even accept appointments on your Squarespace site? You can offer online or in person private sessions, group classes, as well as workshops. Are you ready to build your own website? Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash delightful travelers for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name. And of course, a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting creators like us. All right, back to the vlog. Anna did say we're walking into town, but we actually do have a rental car here. Now this is just a very small one. I think it's called a Chevy Premier, but you're gonna need a car if you're on this island. It's an absolute must. I wouldn't say public transportation's great. There's taxis, of course, but you're gonna need a car, <laughs> absolutely. It's about 50 euros uh, for a day for this guy. I think we rented it for about five days, and so far it's been coming in super handy. Just know that if you're coming here, make sure to get like a little car like this. It's perfect to zip around in. If you don't wanna rent a car and drive yourself, taxis are definitely an option. We haven't been doing that since we do have the car, but we asked the front desk here how much costs are for taxis, and they said it's about $15 to get into Marigo, which is, I think, what a 20 minute drive. Yeah, but only and 20 bucks to get to Phillipsburg. Phillipsburg, yeah, which is quite far. It's on the other side of the island. So let's say taxis aren't too unaffordable. I don't know how much they are for short distances. Like if you were staying in Marigo and just needed to go up the road, is it like a set rate? I'm not sure about that, but those are some general costs. So we just came over to a restaurant called Cynthia's Talk of the Town. And yeah, it smells incredible here. There's smokers on. You wouldn't believe what the smells are, you guys. Now, we got a Carib. Finally, we were trying to find a Carib. We tried to order SXM beer, which is a local beer to the island. They didn't have the local beer to the island. Go figure, that keeps happening to us. It's happening to us before in the DR a lot. So, got this little crib. I'm gonna try it. We added a lime to it that seems to be our thing. I've had these a very long time ago. It just should be an easy drink and lager. Yeah, it's gonna do the trick on a hot day. So this type of restaurant is called a Lolo, and you're gonna find them all throughout the island. They're basically like local Creole restaurants. A lot of the times they're just literally on the side of the road out of a truck, but you get them in all sorts of forms this time. We actually, you know, have tables and get to sit down. I think they're generally a lot of like local food, barbecue. We've already ordered and I'm really excited to try it. Our first item has arrived. This is called a Johnny Cake. It's something that you're gonna find all over St. Martin. I think it's considered a local food and sort of a local pancake I mean it's sort of a pancake I'd say it's sort of just like fried dough but let's give it a try and see what it actually tastes like oh, look at that <laughs> yeah so this is hot so I'm assuming they just cooked it yeah it is basically fried dough this reminds me if you were at home in Canada of something like a beaver tail without anything on it. Beaver tails in Canada, you can add all sorts of like things like Nutella. This is just basically fried dough that you get at a carnival somewhere. It's yummy, kind of simple, but yummy. We also got another mountain of food, you guys. Oh my God, we might have uh, done ourselves here. So you're gonna see some coleslaw. You see some rice and beans over here. We got some ribs. Look at these ribs, oh my God. And we got chicken. And this was just one plate. We're gonna share it. I think it was, uh, Oh, just a little over ten dollars. We'll make sure to put the price on the screen. Don't worry, but this is a lot of food. Like it's a lot of food for the price we just paid, you guys. I'm just gonna go right in. I got some of the ribs here. They're hot to the touch. Oh my god, they smell so good. Something I love about being in the Caribbean and just having barbecue food. Mmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. We ordered right today. The thing about this place is you're walking up the street, there's all this anticipation because you can smell it. And now I get to taste it. This is cooked perfectly. How on earth they do this? It's seasoned ever so nicely. Little charred marks, nice and brown. Let me get another bite. Mm. Oh yeah, I think I'm just gonna eat the ribs. I'm not gonna save Anna any. Let's give this chicken a go. I think Trevor already said this, but we got a combo plate that has both ribs 
and chicken. It smells amazing. Yeah, that chicken is cooked perfectly as well. Nicely seasoned, but nothing overpowering. We got some hot sauce on the side. I haven't tried it yet, but we were just warned that it'll probably be extremely, extremely spicy, but I'm gonna definitely try that with it. But the chicken itself cooked really, really nicely. We must just barbecue here all day, cook low and slow. So in terms of food costs, you definitely expect to pay less at those Lolo's that we were talking about, the local restaurants. We're in a pretty touristy area, so I'm guessing it's probably a little more expensive than it might be in the more local areas where you, when you go to a Lolo, but we paid 25 euros for all of that, including the beer. I think that's pretty great. But in general, food is moderately priced, pretty expensive, but nothing over the top. We haven't seen anything totally crazy. Of course, there's very expensive restaurants. There's like moderately priced restaurants. You can probably get a burger and fries for 15 euros to 20 euros. Yeah, like in, in general, would you say, I'd say it's priced like Canada or the US. Yeah, maybe slightly less expensive than Canada, but I don't know if the food ex it itself is less expensive or the, al I mean, the alcohol is definitely less expensive. We are in like a European type place and they will not pay outrageous mm -hmm. prices for wine like we do in Canada and the USA. Is, so, that, is that why we love Europe so much? I know. So you can get here, you can get a glass of wine with your dinner for three to seven euros, which is great. One of the uh, great things about this town is it's actually right on the beach. I know you guys would not be able to tell that where we just were, but look at this. There's this like kind of uh, dock here and there's like a strip of restaurants both directions and our hotel is only 10 minutes away so yeah we're big fans of that we knew coming here we'd be able to walk everywhere whenever that's the case we usually like the place a little more it's almost like these beaches just keep getting better and better these are really unique because you got the restaurants and the gorgeous water huh? yeah I love it here I, I I'm definitely gonna say if we when we come back we'll definitely come back to st. Martin I would love to stay in this area it's definitely my favorite like Trevor just said, yeah. it's walkable, so you, I mean, you, you'd want to have a car probably for a day or two to go explore the rest of the island, but when you're just staying here, you don't need you a don't car. You don't need a car. But there is something else we want to talk about since we're on the topic of food, like the category of food, and it's tipping or service. Now, before we got here, we read that usually, like, there's a service charge included on a lot of bills, which would Especially on the French side, I believe. Yeah, which yeah. would be great because we knew it was going to be a little complicated coming in here because you have Americans and Canadians who tip for anything mm -hmm. and then you have Europeans who generally don't tip unless it's exceptional yeah, service. Yeah, just they round up. Once they round while. up and stuff. But yeah. I just mean Americans and Canadians will just throw 15 to 20 percent at anything, almost mm -hmm. anything. So we have noticed <laughs> that um, we think, and we don't know for sure, but because of our accents and they can tell we're from somewhere in North America, that we often get asked at the end of, at the end of paying if we want to add service on. And you might say, well, that's completely normal. Like, why don't you tip? You're from Canada. Well, here's the thing. We were sitting by lots of other tables so far who some are Europeans, some are locals, and they don't get the same question asked. Yeah, we, at least we don't think. We've been actually purposely trying to overhear the conversations to see if they're asking them, do you want to add a tip on? Do you want yeah. to add a tip? And we don't think they're asking the locals <laughs> and the Europeans, but they're asking the Canadians and Americans, which, which we don't agree with. Oh, we don't. I don't agree with that at all. That's like just singling out yeah. like two countries just because they tip mm -hmm. like that's crazy yeah. imagine if yeah. someone from France came to Canada and we just made them pay extra because they were from France yeah. so and in general because we travel so much we usually try to look up what's what's normal in each country like yeah. when we get there is it customary to tip or not and we usually follow what what the locals do so yeah. it, I don't particularly like being singled out and asked to pay more yeah we wanted to bring this up because you guys ask us a lot about tipping and how we do service but it's always the Canadians Americans this is what we noticed so far the service is excellent though but we just wanted to point this out if anyone knows if this is actually happening mm -hmm. comment below but so far it seems like it is to us but we have no way and to not everywhere verify. and definitely not, not everywhere, everywhere. Right, right this place we just ate it they didn't ask yeah. at all yeah. so so far it's just been select restaurants and it's like when they pick up on our accent mm -hmm. I don't know you guys tell us it's actually a lot of fun walking around here. There's all these like colorful buildings in this little uh, little town, huh? Yeah, we were here last night and everything was open and booming, loud music. Like it was quite quite an active place. Mon today's Monday, it's pretty quiet around. But yeah. let's talk a uh, next thing about we want to talk about in terms of prices. Something we've actually been having issues with is eSIMs or SIMs. We actually didn't go to try to find a SIM card. We've been using eSIMs for probably the last year and a half. We generally have really good luck. Here, not so much. I actually bought, well, for, for one, we found eSIMs for, but in particular for St. Martin, really expensive. People don't know what an eSIM is. It's like the card, the SIM card's actually built in a lot of the newer phones. Yeah. So that's actually And it, it makes it so much easier because you can just install it right 
from wherever you are. You don't need to go into a store and go through the whole process. So usually it's pretty easy. That was the only option, so one gig for ten dollars. <laughs> pretty expensive. But uh, I found another one that was relatively more expensive. I'll put it up on the screen. Well, maybe I won't even put it up on the screen. I think it was thir five gigs for like fifteen dollars, something like that. Didn't work. It didn't work at all. And I haven't got any help back from the company that I bought it from. They were called Global Yo, so just a warning about them. <laughs> it also doesn't help that there's like, you got the Dutch side and the French side. Yeah. Throw in that confusion. Yeah, so then Trevor <laughs> bought like a global SIM card, also on Air Allo. Seems to, in general, work, so it's good for like a whole year. I think we paid about $80, something like that. Yeah, something like that. And it's good for about 70 countries. I think I may have said in another video, like this might not even matter to a lot of you guys watching because I know a lot of Americans travel and they have roaming built into their cell phone plans then if you take the French I'm not sure if, if the people from France that come here just have their plans working automatically same with the Dutch but for Cana Canadians us Canadians if you don't know we have the worst cell phone plans in the world the most expensive some of the most expensive we're definitely in the top three and uh, if you're gonna roam you have to pay about $15 a day in a lot of countries it might even be more here just a day to have your phone on so that's why we use eSIMs when we can, except they're not working here so well. We are now back at the hotel. We're gonna give you a tour of our studio loft. They do have a whole bunch of different room types, but this is a loft. We do have a kitchen. I think most, or if not all of our rooms actually have full kitchens here, yeah. which is amazing. So like full fridge, microwave, stovetop, oven. <laughs> yeah, amazing. it's crazy. Just this way is the bathroom. So you get a walk-in shower there, which really is really nice. nice. Shower. And I will say, one complaint I often have about hotels is that there's not a lot of space to put things, and I feel like they really thought this out. So it's like, there's shelves over here, there's space around the sink to put stuff, there's space under the sink, so I really, really appreciate that. We'll take you guys towards the living room here. We have a little table. I've kind of made it into an office, and yes, I'm editing a video, as we always are. <laughs> yes. And of course, this is the living room. There is a sofa over here, and I'm pretty sure that's a pull-out sofa, so if you did have a kid or an extra person with you, they could sleep down here, but you have the TV. Although, why would you watch the TV when you have that right there? They, they're gonna see the view in a second. There is a closet here uh, behind us. Now, I'm gonna take you guys up to the loft area. Uh, so this is a neat little feature. So you just have a, quite a few steps up and then you get to a landing here with a gorgeous, very inviting king size bed. And I can vouch for this. It's one of the more comfy beds we've been in in a while. Also, there's AC blasting at me right here. This is awesome because it's very hot outside in case you didn't know. So you're gonna want this to cool down. Well, what I'd say is the best feature. <laughs> I'm not even joking when I say this might be one of the best views we've had in any hotel room we've ever stayed at. And that's saying a lot. There is a screen. I love that. It's not a common thing down in the Caribbean. I don't know why, so it's great when you find one. But this is what it's all about. Like, I really cannot get over this view. Uh, Last night, we even left like the door open for a little while, had the AC off so we could hear the waves. I went to bed with the sound of the waves. Trevor closed it up later when he came to bed and turned the AC on, but it was the best. Even at nighttime, you could see down in the water still, at midnight looked crystal clear. I know, this is crazy. Just to give you guys like um, some directions or just basically where we were earlier, we started over there and the pool's on top of that little, um, what do we call that, like a, like a hill? A hill? <laughs> yeah, that, but that's where the walkway is. And on the other side, there's the other beach. So yeah, you can't go wrong here. So the nice thing about staying here is you do have this kitchen that we showed you earlier. So if you want to do some cooking and save some money, you can absolutely do so. There's actually a grocery store right up the road. We did go there and managed to take some notes on some prices. Of course, we, we don't have prices on every single thing in the grocery store. But there's some things uh, that we thought we'd list off to give you guys a better idea on uh, the costs here. So wine you can get for about five euros and up. Pringles, three euros. Heineken, an eight pack, five euros. Local French bread is two euros. Cereal is three euros. A bag of rice, three euros. Tomato sauce is about two dollars and fifty euro. Pasta, one fifty euro. Fish, somewhere around eighteen euro. Steak, five to ten euro. And frozen pizza. Four euros. So hopefully that gives you kind of a rough idea of the cost, at least for groceries here on the island. If you're coming to this island, you're probably going to want to do some tours. Unfortunately, we just didn't have enough time, but we'll definitely be back to St. Martin and doing lots more things sometime in the future. But I did get some prices for you if you are interested in going on um, some tours. There is a tour desk right here at this amazing hotel, so you can book directly through here. But I looked some up online just to see, you know, a general price of, of tours in the area. So one thing you might want to do is go on a catamaran, go snorkeling, have lunch. That's about $139 to $150 for a day. 
Uh, there's a hundred dollars for a guided ATV tour around the island. That sounds like a lot of fun. And eighty-five dollars for a sunset dinner tour. That sounds wow. fun. Too. And these are dollars, not euros. These were in dollars. Yeah, Interesting. I just looked it up online. So it wasn't. It wasn't from. It was more like via tour. I'll put some links down below. Yeah. If you guys want to book something. Yeah, it's cool. You can see people back there now working on some tours. And here's the I think kayaks. Yeah. We mentioned that earlier in the video that you can yeah, kind of uh, take them out. Here. That's amazing. Yeah, everything's included here. Look, and if I pivot this way, like there's the restaurant. There's the beach in this place, huh? I know. <laughs> well, it's time we enjoy some pina coladas. Uh, believe it or not, this is the first time we're having pina coladas in a very, very long time. Maybe the first since we've been here. It definitely the first since we've been here. We even, you guys might, some of you will know this. We live in the Dominican Republic. I never order a pina colada <laughs> and I love them. I don't know why I don't. So we're in paradise. What better drink to have? I'm sitting back at our chair, which is waiting for us to wrap up this video. <laughs> I know, I know. So this is uh, our last video in St. Martin. Uh, it's not our last video of uh, our Caribbean island adventures. Yeah. Next up, we're going to Anguilla. So that's gonna be a whole other vibe. We can't wait to show you guys. But first, what's our overall thoughts on St. Martin? I actually liked it way more than I thought. Mm -hmm. I feel like some of the Caribbean islands, like uh, for instance, like Turks and Caicos was probably the last one we were to. It's an absolutely gorgeous place, but it didn't have a whole lot of like culture to it, where yeah, here, it, it's really interesting. It, Turks miss the character for me. I mean, the beaches are gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but this place is a little bit different. I, I love that you have the Dutch side, you have the French side, of course you have locals as well. Yeah, like everything the Creole natives. The yeah, food, yeah, everything is yeah, mixed together. Yeah. The beaches, like, hello, look, we're, look where we're at. May I remind you, we're standing on one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever seen in the Caribbean. This place has it all, and hopefully you found the video helpful with the cost today. Like maybe now you have a better idea of what it's gonna uh, cost before you get here, huh? Yes, and if you haven't watched our other two videos, definitely go back and do that because we went to different areas, did some different things, and if you yeah. are coming here, you might want to check them out. Yes, absolutely. Now, if you got this far in the video, it's Trevor and Anna, Delightful Travelers. Click on the subscribe button, leave us a comment, heck, share the video, hit like, let us know what you guys thought about the video today, but we are definitely gonna put our feet up at this point. We've been, yeah. I think, working a little too hard. It's time we go in the water for once. Yeah, yeah for sure. We haven't even swam yet while we've been here, but we do want to say a huge thank you to Grand Cast Beach Club for having us here yes. and allowing us to be here and show, show this gorgeous place off. Okay, enough talking. And time to drink some pina colada. And also, there is, of course, a link in the description if you guys want to come stay here yourself, which you should. Yeah, make sure to do that. It's just right below the video area. But now, for real, we're going to put our feet up and drink that pina colada. All right, guys, that's it. <laughs> From St. Martin, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.